Hello, my name is Jacob with Wonder Makers Environmental, here to demonstrate to you the contents and the use of the asbestos bulk sampler with case containing the Wonder Makers bulk sampling tool. Here's your case with your label on it. To open the case, we're going to detach these two plastic latches on the front, lift the lid up, and look at the contents. To start off with, we have a brochure indicating the contents of the case, along with other accessories that you can purchase to work with the sampling system, and several quotes and a demonstration about how to use it. We also have an up-to-date price list. This is changed every year, uh, containing the prices for those various different accessories that we talked about elsewhere in the brochure. Setting the brochure aside, we've got the actual contents of the case. We've got 100 cutter sleeves lined up along the side and the bottom here. We have a power driver, a handle, and wonder fill. We're gonna go through what these different components are. Let's start off by grabbing a cutter out and showing you how to open it and why we package them this way. So the cutter sleeve is an aluminum piece that's packaged in a hard plastic vial with a rubberized cap. This creates an airtight sample system. So once your sample's been collected, it's in here, no asbestos fibers or other dust from your sampled material is gonna leak out into the environment. To open this up and get it ready to sample, we typically pull the red cap off, and then we recommend placing the red cap on the bottom of the tube. This prevents you from losing it, and it makes it less likely to roll around and roll off the table that you're, sam or that you're setting your samples on, that sort of thing. And we're gonna drop this sleeve out of the cap, and we're gonna take a look at it real quick. Um, we've got a notch at the top that's gonna interact with our handle and power driver when we get to that in a moment. It's tapered on this end to make it easier to cut, and then it's hollow all the way through for pushing that sample out once it gets to the lab. In order to collect a sample then, we're gonna start with the handle. This is the original T-handle design. Um, this little threaded thumb screw here is loosens and tightens uh, in order to lock the cutter sleeve on. So we're gonna slide the cutter sleeve so that the notch clips through that thumb screw and tighten it down. This is now ready to collect a sample here. We're gonna set that aside for a moment. We're gonna look at the power driver. Power driver is the same nose piece attachment as the T-handle, but it's cut on this end in order to allow you to put it on a power drill. So we're gonna grab another sample collection tube out, pop the top off. In this case, I put it in here because it's not going anywhere. Uh, and then we're going to slide the cutter sleeve onto the power driver. That's now ready to collect a sample. When collecting a sample with the power driver, we recommend that in addition to wetting the area that you're collecting the sample, that you have a HEPA vacuum available, and that you hold the HEPA vacuum nozzle close to the point where the cutter sleeve is impinging on the material you're sampling. Uh, this is because it can generate a lot more dust than the handheld device does because you've got so much more mechanical advantage. This tool is designed for things like multi-layered fibrous roofing, um, potentially even plaster, although it doesn't always work so well for that. Uh, but this is basically things that you need a little more oomph than you do with the T-handle. We're going to take this off, put it back in the vial, and recap it. Sometimes a little bit of rotation helps that cap slide on there more easily. I'm going to put the T-handle back in the case. We're going to talk about Wonderfilm. This is an insulative product. Um, it is temperature res resistant once dried. It is sensitive to temperature while it's still in a semi-liquid form like this, in so much as it gets more viscous when it's cold, uh, more runny when it's hot. Uh, you don't really want to let it be stored in you know, extreme temperatures. If it is in your car and you're doing some sampling later uh, and it was cold out there, you can hold it in your hand or even put it inside your jacket for a little while to warm it back up. It has a six month shelf life. Uh, it is a cancer uh, causing compound according to the state of California. So don't ingest it, try not to get it on your hands, that sort of thing, but otherwise relatively safe. We use this for backfilling the holes we create with our core sampler so that no fibers can be released uh, from our sampling site and it maintains the insulative properties of any pipe wrap uh, or other thermal barrier that we were sampling. It comes with uh, six ounces in the case. We do sell replacements of that in both the six and 16 ounce size. Setting the case aside, let's demonstrate how to take a sample then. Got this piece of insulation here. It's very clear that we've done multiple samples on this piece before uh, from the, all the different holes that have been filled with Wonderfill. Uh, this is a calcium silicate insulation pipe, so it's non asbestos containing, but it's great for doing a sample of, well, how we collect samples. So we're going to go ahead and do that. First thing we're going to do is we're going to wet our sample collection site because samples are required to be collected wet per the asbestos regulations. Then we're going to take our cutter sleeve, I rotate so hopefully you can see this a little better. And we're gonna twist it back and forth while applying pressure in order to get through that canvas wrapping. 
once we're through the canvas wrapping, I don't know if you can see that on the video very well, it slides much easier through the actual insulation material. All right. And it's now stopped because I've hit the pipe in the center in the center of this pipe wrap. So we've got our sample vial then. We're going to slide this out. Let's see those fibers there. And we're going to slide this into the vial, pinch the top so that we're holding the cutter sleeve tight, undo the thumb screw, pop that off. We can then take our cap from the bottom, place it over the top here, and don't drop it. One moment. All right, having recollected my cap, uh, then you simply put the cap back on. Ideally, you push it down with the cutter sleeve so that it uh, helps provide a seal against any fibers escaping while you place it in there. You can see your sample inside the tube. This is now ready to be shipped to the lab. In order to prevent your sample from getting confused with other samples on a different project or someone else's samples, you can write right on this tube. Uh, we typically do that with a Sharpie. We've also heard of people using a label maker to create their labels and then you just apply the sticker. In this case, I'm gonna label it one, two, three, Smith. Now that we've collected our sample, we wanna backfill that hole with the Wonderfill. I've got an open bottle here, so I'm not opening a new bottle from the sample collection kit. We're simply going to remove the cap. And you wanna make sure that the Wonderfill is down at the bottom of the bottle, because otherwise you'll use your bottle as a little bellows to blow material out from that opening. And we're simply going to backfill that opening pretty substantially because it does contract while drying. And then for that reason, we overfill onto the top some and make sure we're past the opening. Now, gravity's doing a little bit of work on it there, which is making it a little less pretty than it could be, but there you go. That will now dry and prevent any fiber release from that site and continue to allow the pipe rep to do its job of insulating the pipe until it's eventually abated. I'm gonna move this aside then. Bring our case back into focus. I'm gonna put this handle back away in the case so it's ready to go to a customer. All right, there you go. One Wondermaker's bulk sampling kit. Uh, we do offer the cutter sleeves in replacement packs of 100, 500, or 1,000. Obviously, you can't fit 500 or 1,000 in here, but you do fit 100 in here nicely, so that allows you to refill it. Uh, and then if you're doing a lot on a bulk project or something, hey, there you go, you got the bigger sizes, and there's a small cost savings for ordering them in bulk as well. We look forward to serving you with this and other products. Thank you.